Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the continuation of our series on time to prepare. I have a story that I'd like to share with you. It's from Volume 2 of the Testimonies, 594 to 597. There are several important lessons in this story entitled The Impressive Dream. And so, as you might be sitting at home or wherever, make some notes about some references, paging, and so forth as to the lessons that we need to learn. This story comes from a large settlement of Adventists in Battle Creek, Michigan, August 1868. The messenger had a dream of being with a large body of people. You can imagine a large crowd, maybe uh, 500 to 1,000 people, maybe more. But among this large body of people, of course, some were prepared to stay. But there was a portion of this assembly started out to prepare to journey. They were going to leave the confines of the large settlement of Sabbath-keeping Christians, Seventh-day Adventists, and they were going to travel to another country. They had heavily loaded wagons hooked up to a team of horses, and they began their journey. It was loaded up with what they considered the most essential things to their family in the back of the wagon. We had heavily loaded wagons. The wagons were filled with, how do we say, stuff, essential stuff. On one side of this road was a deep precipice. So they began their journey and they start up this steep road. On one side of the road was a steep precipice and the other side of the road was a long drop off. So it was important for them to stay in the road. And one of our first lessons is as we prepared to travel for the Lord, as we prepared to make our journey from the cities to the country, for instance, that we stay in the road and the, under the plan of God's uh, guidance. This road was a high, smooth wall on one side and a steep precipice on the other. As we journeyed on, the road grew narrower and steeper. We were obliged to press close to the wall. So they had to move over and stay close to the wall away from the edge because the road was getting narrower. Reminds me of a story that I've had in my own experience uh, as a practicing Christian or trying to be, I find at times that my road right at my feet widens and I seem like I have more room, it's more comfortable. It's undetectable widening, but as we allow worldly influences to come into our lives, our road, instead of becoming more narrow, becomes wider and more comfortable and we can walk together side by side on this wider road headed for destruction. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way, and few there be that find it. And this group of people with their horses and wagons, they found the road growing narrower and steeper. In some places, it seemed so very narrow 
that when we that we concluded that we can no longer travel with loaded wagons we then loosed the wagons from the horses took a portion of our stuff the luggage from the wagons and placed it on the horses and journeyed on by horseback well this was quite a sacrifice because they felt that the stuff they had in the wagons was essential and now they got to pare it down some more as we progressed this path became more narrow we were obliged to press close to the wall to save ourselves from falling off the narrow road down the steep precipice important lesson here brothers and sisters is as we travel the christian way it doesn't become more easy it becomes more narrow and in my years of experience i have found that to be true that the road is narrower under god's plan and if you find your trail getting wider and easier take stock stop and pray ask god seek his face press close to him ask him what do i need to do as we progressed this path became more narrow we were obliged to press close to the wall to save ourselves from falling off the narrow road as we did this the luggage on the horses pressed against the wall and caused us to sway toward the precipice we feared that we should fall and be dashed in pieces on the rocks we then cut the luggage from the horses and it fell over the precipice you know what that luggage represented that was the last thing we had on this earth and it all went over the precipice what we thought was essential god is asking us to continue on the narrow way and make whatever sacrifice is necessary to enable us to keep going we continued on horseback greatly fearing as we came to the narrow places in the road that we should lose our balance and fall at such times a hand seemed to take the bridle and guide us over these narrow perilous places we had the privilege of god having being present with us as we travel this narrow road as the path grew more narrow we decided that we could no longer travel with safety on horseback we left the horses and went on foot in single file one following in the footsteps of the other we had to go single file now we couldn't go side by side we left the horses and went on foot one following the other at this point small cords came down off of the top of the wall let down from the top of the pure white wall these were eagerly grasped by us to aid us in keeping our balance upon the path because the path was getting so narrow it was starting to slope toward the precipice so we needed these cords the path finally became so narrow that we concluded that we could travel more safely without our shoes so we slipped them off our feet and went on some distance without them soon it was decided we could travel more safely without our stockings these were removed and we journeyed on with bare feet this narrow pathway is making demands on everything that we have 
as we begin walking on our bare feet, our bare feet were starting to get cut and started bleeding. We then thought of some people. We thought of those who had not accustomed themselves to privation and hardship. Where were such now? They were not in the company. You see, in previous changes from wagons to horses, from luggage on the horses to horses to shoes, stockings, it says here, at every change, some were left behind. There is a, one exception to not leaving anybody behind as you make your transition from the city to the country, is that those that don't want to go with you were left behind. And that's a real separation struggle. Those only who remained who had accustomed themselves to endure hardship. Think of James and Ellen White and traveling various places, eating turnips, just to be able to save money to put forward the gospel. And it says for us, brothers and sisters, that we'll be called upon to make even greater sacrifices. And it provides a tremendous shaking experience for us when we have to do that. But let's do it cheerily and press on because what are we going to go back for? What are we going to go to? What are we going to experience? At every change, some are left behind. The privations of the way only made these more eager to press on to the end. So we stopped, we started in a large group. Then the group starts getting smaller and smaller because of the privations of the way. And we say to ourselves, maybe silently, maybe openly, I would never give up. But Peter said that, and the only way that we'll never give up is proportion to how much we love the Lord and to press on. Our danger, our danger was letting these privations turn us around. For this road was narrow, that's true. But there was traffic coming back as God's people traveled onward. Alfred Lee painted a very important picture called The Narrow Way that's in the E.G. White estate showing God's people traveling up this narrow way. It shows people falling off the path down into the world below. It might be important if we could get a copy of that picture and put it into our mind and in our homes. Our danger of falling from the pathway increased. We pressed close to the white wall, yet could not place our feet fully on the path, for it was too narrow. We then suspended nearly our whole weight on these cords, exclaiming, We have hold from above. We have hold from above. We voice those words to each other that we have hold from above, giving you the idea that these cords coming down off of this top of this white wall to help us along this path that has all but faded away, that it was our faith in God no matter what happens. And that's an important concept. However difficult, however much privation and hardship we might have to experience. Separation of the family like Lot did with his family. We need to press on because 
those in our family that are not following immediately may follow later because of our leadership and we have faith in the leadership of Christ in our life and we press on praying for them all the time we have hold from above the same words were uttered by all the company in the narrow pathway we heard the sounds of mirth and and revelry that seemed to come from the abyss below we heard the profane oath the vulgar jest low vile songs we heard the war song the dance song we heard instrumental music and loud laughter mingled with cursing cries of anguish and bitter wailing and were more than ever determined to keep upon the narrow difficult pathway what we heard from below it was not a part of our experience anymore it wasn't attractive to us it helped us to keep going on up the narrow pathway much of the time we were compelled to suspend our whole weight upon the cords i noticed that the beautiful white wall to our left was stained with blood it caused a feeling of regret to see the wall thus stained the feeling however lasted but for a moment as i soon saw that that it was all as it should be those who are following after will know that others have passed this narrow path difficult way before us and will conclude that if others were able to pursue their onward course we can do the same so the blood on the wall the people that had gone before perhaps gave their lives to for the privilege of staying on this pathway and we must adjust our thinking that in the future we may have to have that same experience at length we came to a large ca- chasm at which our path ended as the blood on the wall became evident to us more and more there was nothing now to guide our feet upon this path our whole reliance must be on the cords which had increased in size until they were as large as our bodies so this was great faith faith that maybe we don't have today but as we get this experience with god and trust him no matter what our faith will increase here we were for a time thrown into perplexity and distress we inquired in fearful whispers to what is the cord attached my husband that is james white was just before me large drops of sweat were falling from his brow the veins in his neck and temples were increased to double their size and suppressed agony and groans came from his lips the sweat was dropping from my face and i felt such anguish as i had never felt before a fearful struggle was before us should we fail here all the difficulties of our journey that we had experienced would be for nothing before us on the other side of the chasm was a beautiful field of green grass i could not see the sun but bright soft beams of light resembling fine gold and silver were resting on this field nothing i had seen upon earth could compare in beauty and glory with this field but could we succeed in reaching it remember there's a large chasm here all we have is this cord nothing to stand on we're going through the time of jacob's trouble and severe anguish and doubtful 
of our Christian experience. Nothing I had seen in this earth could compare with the beauty. Should the cord break, we must perish. Again, in whispered anguish, the words were breathed. What holds the cord? For a moment, we hesitated to venture. But we exclaimed, our only hope is to trust wholly to the cord. It was been our dependence all the difficult way. I will, it will not fail us now. Still, we were hesitating in distress. The words were then spoken. God holds the cord. We need not fear. These words were repeated by those behind us, accompanied with, He will not fail us now. He has brought us thus far in safety. My husband then swung himself over the fearful abyss into the beautiful field beyond. I immediately followed, and oh, what a sense of relief and gratitude I felt. I heard voices raised in triumphant praise to God. Praise the Lord. I was happy and perfectly happy. I woke and found that the anxiety I had experienced in passing over the difficult route, every nerve in my body seemed to be in tremor. This dream needs no comment. It made such an impression upon my mind that probably every item in it will be vivid before me while my memory shall continue. In closing, brothers and sisters, this word of counsel from 1T 187. God leads his people on step by step. He brings them up to different points calculated to manifest what is in the heart. Some endure at one point but fall off at the next. You see, in our story, the people came up to a certain time when they had to give up, let's say, the luggage on the horses, and they're saying to themselves, it's too much. They went back. But some endure at one point, but fall off at the next. At every advanced step, at every advanced point, the heart is tested and tried a little closer. The road gets narrower and narrower. And if we could learn this very basic lesson of trust in God, no matter what happens to you. If the professed people of God find their hearts opposed to this straight work, it should convince them that they have a work to do to overcome if they would not be spewed out of the mouth of the Lord. Said the angel, God will bring his work closer and closer to test and prove every one of his people. Some are willing to receive one point, but when God brings them another point, they shrink from it, stand back, because they find it strikes directly at some cherished idol. Here they have opportunity to see what is in their hearts that shuts out Jesus. You see, it's all based on relationship. What is there in our lives that would shut Jesus out and allow him to help us over the difficult way? They prize something higher than the truth. Their hearts are not prepared to receive Jesus. This testing process reveals how far are we willing to go with God. The individuals are tested and proved a length of time to see if they will sacrifice their idols and heed the counsel of the true witness. If any will not be purified through obeying the truth and overcome their selfishness, their pride, evil passions, the angels of God have the charge quoting, they are joined to their idols, let them alone. 
we don't want to have that pronounced against us. So let's continue to meet each test. As they pass on their work, leaving these with sinful traits unsubdued to the control of evil angels. Those who come to every point and stand every test and overcome, be the price what it may, have heeded the counsel of the true witness and they will receive the latter rain and thus be fitted for translation. 1T 187. So each day we have a testing process that tells us how we are doing in our preparations. And the most trying thing perhaps is not what we're doing with our hands is the battle, the great controversy in our heart over testing, over trial, over some important idol that we are not willing to give up. May we, each of us, give our hearts to God with this commitment that we trust God for help in every test and trial that becomes, that comes our way. He won't test us above what we're able to bear, but will with the temptation make a way of escape. May God help us to do that is my prayer. Amen.